Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Gracious and loving Father, we praise and thank you for this opportunity this morning. You've gathered us together with Secretary of Education DeVos and our House Speaker Mike Terzai. We ask your blessing upon them and the important work that they do for our commonwealth and for our nation. We thank you for the educational opportunities that we each have enjoyed in our own lives. And we pray that all parents in our nation, especially here in our commonwealth in central Pennsylvania, will have the opportunity to make the right choice, the choice they want for the education of their sons and their daughters. Please bless these initiatives that will give greater freedom to our parents to choose the right fit for their child's format, their children's formation. We thank you for the blessing of our being together and ask your spirit to guide this discussion this morning. These things we ask as we pray all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. You may be seated. And ladies and gentlemen, if you do speak today, the microphone in front of you has a button right in the middle. You, if, when you hit it, it goes green. Please make sure you hit it before you start speaking and uh, identify yourself. This way, video can pick you up. Thank you. Good morning, Madam, Madam Secretary. Welcome to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. We are very honored and excited that you chose Pennsylvania and Harrisburg Catholic Elementary School as the site on your back to school tour. The private school community cannot thank you enough and all the state legislators that are here today for your countless hours advocating for the best educational opportunities for all students in America and right here in Pennsylvania. School choice is a difficult topic to discuss in society today. There are many individuals that oppose giving parents options for their children in education. At times, the school choice message gets twisted by our opponents. Please, Madam Secretary, don't ever get discouraged. You are doing the right thing for children by putting children first. We stand with you, your efforts, to make sure our children best interest in education come first. That is why the private school community here in Pennsylvania supports the Educational Freedom Scholarship Act and we will help you in any way we can to advocate for the program until it passes. Thanks again and God bless. Now we'll go right to our agenda. So, uh, Madam Secretary, if you like. One, um, it's just a real privilege to be here with such a committed group of individuals that are um, united in their desire to continue to advance education freedom for kids so that they can find uh, their right fit and future educationally. And uh, I had a wonderful visit to the school and I always, it's one of my favorite things to do is visit with the students in the classrooms and it's just a joy to see their excitement about learning. But I'm here today to uh, talk with all of you about, uh, first of all, your efforts here in Pennsylvania to continue to expand education freedom and choices to families, and to talk about an administration proposal that we've worked on for quite some time, which has now been introduced in both the House and the Senate. It is called the Education Freedom Scholarship Program, or initiative, and it would uh, establish a federal tax credit, an annual fund of about five, of five billion dollars, and it would be voluntarily contributed to by individuals and corporations as a little portion of their federal tax bill annually. If Pennsylvania and any other state chose to participate, first of all, it's not a mandate, it is a voluntary program, voluntary on, on the part of contributors, voluntary on the part of states, participation and uh, and certainly then voluntary on the part of families that would want to take advantage of the scholarships that would ultimately be granted through each state's program so in Pennsylvania you have some robust choices that have been offered to families um, greater much greater demand than you've been able to actually uh, satisfy and in fact I, I was uh, so disappointed with um, the recent veto of an expansion that would have really addressed the needs of tens of thousands of families 
Uh, I know you have other actions uh, underway, and we can talk about those as well. But Pennsylvania would be beneficiaries if every state participated and all the contributions were made to that $5 billion cap. Uh, Pennsylvania would be receiving about $156 million annually to add to the programs and the, and the uh, uh, opportunities that you've already created for families here. And we'd like to encourage people to think very broadly about what education freedom and choice could mean. We've talked a lot about the many millions of jobs that are going unfilled at the federal level and across the board, I know right here in, in Pennsylvania, many as well, that require some kind of education beyond high school, but not necessarily a four-year degree. Well, career and technical education and dual enrollment opportunities and apprenticeship opportunities at the high school level are things that all could be considered as part of an education freedom expansion. Uh, so we encourage people to really think broadly and creatively about how to bring education freedom and to connect opportunities that are available today with students' curiosity and desires and passions. And uh, so with that, I'm going to just stop talking because I really welcome the conversation with everybody here. Thank you, Madam. Madam Secretary, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Sean, if you don't mind, just a, a few remarks. Um, first of all, we asked um, Secretary DeVos uh, to come to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and in particular to uh, our capital city here in Harrisburg. She has been under um, President Trump's administration, really, I, I think, a, uh, a, a really a, a fresh breath air in terms of the education discussion in the United States of America. and. Uh, she brings her leadership on this front <clears throat> from a long history of advocacy throughout the United States, but, but in particular in her home state of uh, Michigan. And uh, the president, she, she was gracious enough uh, to tell a, a group of our legislators yesterday about receiving the call um, from the president of the United States, um, who just presumed she was definitely saying yes. And uh, we are so gracious that she, she did because she's on the forefront of making sure that uh, there's school choice opportunities for parents, grandparents, <clears throat> and guardians who care about uh, each and every every child. And, and uh, the uh, message that our caucus, uh, my colleague, leader Brian Cutler here um, as well, our caucus has always been, yes, many of the students are gonna be educated at, at, at public schools and we want them to be as, as good as they, they can be. But there's many other options, and, and families should have those options too, like this great Catholic school that we're in right now, many Christian schools um, that are just flourishing in our Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, uh, uh, many Jewish day schools. There's also uh, non-denominational schools. Uh, the charter school community is a, a, a part of the public schools in Philadelphia alone. Uh, there's about uh, 70,000 students out of 200,000 in charters with a waiting list of about 30,000. We have always uh, espoused expanding that opportunity and uh, Secretary DeVos is leading that discussion and that movement in the United States of America. So we're very, very honored that you would be here today. And I know uh, Sean's gonna have a robust discussion for us. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you for the invitation also to be here. <laughs> Thank you, moving right along. Uh, Ms. McClinton, welcome. Your story. Thank you. If you could please let us know about your school choice story. <laughs> okay, first of all, my children came from a charter school. I get emotional talking about it, so please forgive me. <laughs> Um, my son was in the fifth grade from, at a charter school. He graduated. He was on a list to go to a uh, all-boys school in Harrisburg. I was told he was going to get in. He got in. A week after graduation, I received a letter. He didn't make the cut. I didn't know where he was going. 
um, I knew I couldn't send him to Harrisburg School District. Uh -uh. And um, I just opened the phone book and I was like, Lord, just guide me. I called Harrisburg Catholic. The secretary answered the phone and she took my information. We talked for about a half an hour. She told me that the um, principal was on vacation. He would give me a call back and I'm stressing to her on the phone, like, please, please make sure that, you know, we don't slip through the crack. He called. He said, Miss McClinton, um, I want you to bring Christian in, all these documents. We sat, we went, went through the meeting. Um, from the time we walked in the door and met with the principal, I felt like a burden lifted, not knowing yet if he was going to be accepted. The principal talked to me what their expectations are as a, for him to be a student. Um, we discussed it. He talked to Christian. Um, and he was like, I have one slot. So I'm sitting there like, he said, I have one slot. Christian, welcome. Now, coming from a public school, then we went to a charter school to come here. Um, he was like, oh, mom, I don't know. So we, you know, he started the school year. He came home the first day and said, Mom, I love it. And I'm like, huh, already? <laughs> and he, you know, he, he talks about how he's learning. He comes home, he came home the first week talking to my mom. And did you know, you know what? You know, his whole, at, his whole attitude changed. And I think a lot has to do with the structure um, that they, they, they teach here, and that the, the teachers really care. You know, they, and like I tell my sons, both of them, your job is to learn, to get your education. They're really, they have blossomed since they've been here. Um, um, I'm, I'm a single mom. I didn't know how I was gonna afford it. I walked out on faith. Mr. Rosinski was talking about X many dollars, and I'm looking at him like, eh. he said, I'm going to take you across the street to talk to our financial lady. Um, we went in, did the paperwork. You know, sometimes it's still a struggle, but I, I have to, so to speak, rob Peter to pay Paul to make sure they get the quality education that I know they deserve. Not only mine, but everyone else's kids. The, these kids, my kids, are our future. We have to put in to our children because if we don't, they're gonna be lost. I want mine to succeed. I want mine to be better than me, you know? And I just, I just thank God for the programs that help with the tuition. Because if it wasn't been for the, um, the help, they wouldn't be here. And I, you know, I just thank you for um, listening. You know, and these are my two sons. These are my world. Joshua or Christian, do you have, Chris, do you have anything to say? Like to talk? <laughs> That's okay. You don't have to. Go ahead. All right. You got some time? We'll move right along, uh, Mr. Speaker. If you want to talk about your, uh, I believe your Harrisburg Pilot Scholarship Program. Sean, um, thank you, Christian and uh, Joshua. Thanks so much for for being here today, and Mrs. McClinton. We're so honored. Um, what I I thought. Uh, Sean, if, if it would be okay with you, uh, if uh, some of the your guests could talk about just because then we'll get to the scholarship program and how it builds off it. Would you mind if um, folks talked about how um, the educational improvement tax credit program in Pennsylvania, how it might be helping uh, in the opportunity scholarship tax credit? It's a subset. Um, the one program is uh, we raised by 25 million with my our team right over there to uh, my left, led by Leader Cutler, and uh, my other fellow members who will introduce themselves. 
but we increased that again by 25 million, which is a significant increase, not as much as obviously we're uh, investing in uh, public education K through 12, and in fact, just a, 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 a mere percentage of that, uh, but it, it certainly seems to help, and we were hoping for a mo more robust program. The governor vetoed that, <clears throat> but I think it's important for folks to understand the impact of that, and then, and then that would walk us into, I think, what we're talking about for Harrisburg. Sure, no problem. Uh, so now we'll turn it to the table. Uh, May I? Kurt, go, go right ahead. You thank you. Part, you first. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Speaker and Madam Secretary, uh, my name is Kirk Hallett, and I run what's called the Joshua Group. The Joshua Group, um, in short story, has sponsoring through EITC and our own fundraising efforts, 70 of the children in Harrisburg Catholic. Uh, and I, and, and I want to, I don't know that Miss, I, I'm sorry, um, McClinton, you know, I think that uh, what I found over the years that the uh, narrative for Mrs. McClinton is not choice, it's chance. And, uh, and unfortunately, uh, I, I kind of wish at least at the level where choice is not a choice, it's a chance, it's the only chance. Education is the anti-poverty program that works. I, I used to think that was a trite phrase, and now I know and I think Mrs. McClinton could, could, could you know, say, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, it's a different conversation when you're talking about folks in poverty. It's a totally different conversation. And it's, 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 it's a diff I, I, the narrative should probably move in that direction. So uh, how could anybody who uh, could stand in front of Mrs. McClinton and say, no, you don't, you don't have this choice. Um, and, and so I am here as, um, and we have, I think, 30-some children, students in McDevitt. Uh, we have to raise seven hundred to eight hundred thousand dollars a year, but we we do. As if you get a scholarship from us, you must come to our after school program, and our after school program is mandatory. It's up on the hill, Allison Hill, which is totally different than this hill, mm -hmm. and um, and they come because they want to be in a private school. They want to be in a better school. Doesn't even have to. Be. It's just a better school, and as a result. Our students, our graduation rate and going on to the next grade level is 97%, whereas the school district we're sitting in is less than 50. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I could go on forever and ever about this because I'm so passionate about it. And um, I knew coming here, and I'm so glad I was invited. I, we, we, Mrs. McClinton and I, we don't run in the circles of, of the Capitol Hill. Uh, but I wanted to take the opportunity to give you something right from the front lines, right from the trenches. And I certainly, uh, uh, I've heard a little bit about Speaker Terzai, what you're proposing. My only suggestion in that proposal, and I don't know if it's true, but you're talking about giving kids, students, uh, tuition money and maybe even a savings account. My recommendation that I've learned is do not do the savings account piece. Just do tuition. That's all students like this lady down here wants. You do a savings account, it becomes a nightmare. It could become a reason for people to, 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 to tear your program down. So if you need $4,500 or whatever the tuition is here, 4,500 bucks, that's it. Once a kid gets into high school and graduates from high school, say Bishop McDevitt or some other private school, not Harrisburg, um, they're on a level playing field. And uh, that's all they want, is to be able to say, I can go to college, and be on a level playing field with every other kid in every other district. So I'm sorry to be grandstanding here, but I don't get much of a chance to do it. And people know when I do, I will. Thank you. Thank you. You're certainly not grandstanding. <laughs> you know, I want to just talk a little bit about our school. Um, you know, Madam Secretary, a chance to go through it. Um, our school only is open because we receive the EITC program. There is no way I could even come close to meeting the budget that we need to operate. Uh, you know, a little bit about our school is that we're 78% Title I students. Uh, we're a community eligible school, so every child who comes into our school gets breakfast and lunch at no cost. And we look at some of the numbers in our families, we have 214 kids in school, every one of them receives some kind of EITC or OST scholarship. They can't afford the tuition without it. And I know without that program 
and Speaker Terzai, our doors could not remain open. And then we take a look on the opposite side, and I look at some of our testing data. Of the grades that I can track, last year our fourth grade in their core subjects of ELA and math grew one and a half grade levels over their one year with us. Our sixth grade in their composite, which is math, ELA, social studies, and science, grew 1.1 grade levels. And our eighth grade composite, which is math, ELA, social studies, and science, grew 1.7 years in their one year with us. We're doing something right but we need the continued assistance. And I thank you, Speaker, for your support that you've always given to us. Um, I just want to fight for our families. Sean, how about uh, Ted and Merle? Um, and if you could just identify, you know, to the secretary and to our members, you know, your, your organizations and your background. Madam Secretary and uh, Mr. Speaker, they, the, the nature of your visit today, especially, is emphasizing cathedral, uh, and obviously that's a, a very real part that all of us live as we're working for education choice. But there's some of us, whether it's Pennsylvania Family Institute or ACSI, um, we work among the what might be nicknamed the Protestant schools, those that are Baptist in their orientation, or Congregationalist, or Methodist. Uh, and, and the whole nature of EITC, and now pre-K and OSDC, uh, very, very important statewide. Uh, we find it's important whether inner city or out in the bush where the deer and the bear outnumber people, uh, there are always kids that need uh, a, a better education than, the, than what they believe is being uh, delivered at their, their local public establishment. Uh, so we are very thankful for these EITC programs. We've been involved with them uh, since, uh, boy, since the early 80s. We started advocating that we needed to start down that road of enhancing the opportunities for parents to engage in choice, uh, choice for their kids in order to get the education that the kids uh, need, that the parents long for, for the, the long-term well-being of their kids. Uh, so we've been very involved, whether with the speaker uh, or others, to advance that overall cause, um, not so much for ourselves, but for the kids. And we thank you. Madam Speaker, um, as Association of Christian Schools International is another Christian school evangelical uh, group. Let me just echo what Kirk said about lower income families, but also what's really been exciting about um, the speakers and, and the initiative with EITC is that it helps middle class families as well too. So you start looking at the numbers that we talk about nationally that families should be able to afford 10% of their education, 10% uh, of their income for, to go to private education. Those aren't such horrible numbers for a middle class family with one child. Mm -hmm. If you start looking at three children, you know, so these kind of programs benefit everybody. I mean, and we, I love your story. We've got them all, of, all across the state. And now you know that because you've worked, you've worked in this area. But just want to encourage you and also want to thank you too in, the, um, in your scholarship program that you've allowed for religious diversity, you know, in that program huge to this table. I also coordinate PA CAPE along with Sean. 90% uh, of the private schools in Pennsylvania participate in that organization, Montessori schools, um, faith-based schools, non-faith-based schools, Jewish schools. That mission that drives the, the schools to be able to open those doors is often driven by faith. And so thank you for your, in your initiative that you worked hard to keep that, that protected for us. So we just, we're very thankful. We want to serve kids. We want to level the playing field. We want to make sure that people really have a real choice. Um, thank you. Otto? Oh, thanks, Sean. Madam Secretary, Speaker Terzai, Bishop Gaynor, Father Brahma. Good morning. Good morning. Um, thank you for giving me this opportunity to participate in this uh, very esteemed uh, conversation discussing on uh, school choice with this very incredible group. Um, nevertheless, I represent uh, REACH Foundation, REACH Alliance. We were founded in 1991 to coordinate the passage of school choice legislation here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Um, I could definitely say that we were the first uh, state in the union to create a tax credit program. Of course, uh, Florida came shortly thereafter. <laughs> and what I would cite as being the major 
focus or thrust or, or th the reason why that we're so successful in moving choice throughout Pennsylvania is because of our group and, and our board. And of course, we have Mr. Michael Gear, who's a board member with PA Family uh, Institute. We have Reverend Ted Clater, of course, who's with uh, Keystone Christian. We have Dr. Merle Skinner with ACSI. We have Ariel Frankston down here with um, Jewish Orthodox Union. And um, I'm not really seeing any of our other board members, but because of our diversity has been our strength. And, and regardless who's in office, if we have D's or R's in the governor's seat, we've always been successful in moving school choice forward in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. There have been times that we, we didn't get everything we want, we wanted, but we always end up with something. You know, I think Martin Luther King said it best when he said that, you know, we, we've all come over on different ships, but we're in the same boat now when it comes to education. We are. I mean, we here in the city of Harrisburg, we have one of the worst performing school districts in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Um, thankfully to uh, you know Speaker Terzai's credit as well as many of the members here to my right we were able to move in a direction to to put someone else in leadership in that school district and hopefully those children will receive a better education I mean it's sad that those children that attend that school in the Harrisburg School District they actually send more children to the state Penn than they do to Penn State It has become a pipeline to the penitentiary and because of everyone in this room with all their help all their efforts all their support, we are going to make a difference in the lives of those children, which of course then translates into their communities, the state, and our nation as a whole. So thank you, um, Madam Secretary, Speaker Terzai, Bishop Gaynor, and of course, Father Brown. Thank you, Ariel. Okay, Madam Secretary, Speaker Terzai, um, it's such an honor to be here today in the presence of so many who just care so much about students and families and communities. Um, I represent Jewish day schools across Pennsylvania, um, and the EITC and OSDC programs have been so crucial in allowing these schools to thrive, bringing in more families, um, making schools and communities more dynamic and diverse, allowing these, um, these students to really get the education that is right for them, um, and not letting cost be a barrier in having these families have these opportunities. Uh, so we're so grateful to everyone who has fought so hard to give these opportunities to families and communities. Thank you, Marie. Madam Secretary and Speaker Terza, I thank you for the opportunity to be here. Bishop, Father, thank you also. I represent the Montessori Schools of Pennsylvania and the American Montessori Society, which is the largest Montessori organization in the world. And the over 100 Montessori schools in Pennsylvania are extremely grateful for EITC and OSTC and hopefully someday the Freedom Scholarship, Education Freedom Scholarships as well across the country. Many of our Montessori schools parents who choose the Montessori methodology, which is a 112-year-old proven method of education, a unique niche methodology that many parents choose, the secretary has chosen it for her uh, children in their preschool years. And the efficacy of this method continues to be researched and found to be very crucial to helping children in the prison, the, the, um, prison pipeline. Uh, it's really been beneficial to uh, underprivileged children in many states, and we hope that continued work to provide funding for parents to choose this method of education will continue, and we thank you for your work. Thank you, everybody. And then I thought uh, I'll just give a summary <clears throat> of where we've been and, and where we're, what we're proposing, and then um, turn it over to the secretary and our members uh, to discuss this and, and, and just school choice in, in the Commonwealth and in the country. We spend um, in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania nearly, I think it's uh, about $32 billion in tax dollars on public education, K through 12, uh, for about 1.6 million of the students that choose traditional public schools. And uh, the interesting thing is, is we talk about school choice, but without our increases over the last four years, the scholarship monies stood at $60 million um, compared to over $30 billion that is going through K through 12, the public education. Now that is a combination of both what we send from state tax dollars 
and once collected on a local basis at local school district level, but the state gives the local school districts the power to levy those taxes. And we are, Mike, if I'm not mistaken, Mike's on my staff, Mike Heckman, we are in the top, um, top, I think it's the, the top nine states, we're in the top, we're eighth or ninth in pro rata um, expenditures per student in public education in the nation. And Pennsylvania's uh, salaries for teachers and administrators um, is in that top 10 as well amongst the 50 states. So this is not a state that doesn't use its tax dollars, both state and local, as empowered by the state on public education. We do. Our contributions to the pension systems this year alone is $2.6 billion, up, I think, 800% over the last 10 years. Um, what we're contributing to the, the, the teachers' pensions. So, yes, it's great to have EITC. We wanted to give it a significant jump start with $100 million added to the scholarship side, plus an escalator that would make sure that we wouldn't have to go to the budget table each and every year to contend for the amount that we've, we've received, uh, depending on who's in charge. We also wanted to further increase income limits because we want to make sure that lots of families have the opportunity to make use of these tax credit scholarships and I combine them educational improvement tax credits um, in the OSTC as well and uh, so combined we now have about 55 million and 135 million today we have uh, 180 million in just scholarships that's great but it's not enough and um, to break sort of the discussion and uh, maybe just the model where we have to argue for the tax credits, it seemed to me take the capital city, which we all come to, um, to do our business here for the people of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and, and why don't we look at a scholarship in this school district where performance is uh, not, not so successful? Let me just read you these these despite disdained efforts at reform like putting another receiver please come on I mean I'm, I'm glad they're doing it I mean it's great but um, we've been down this road before haven't we have we appointed special people before for Harrisburg and the results haven't changed we put more state money in in 2018 only 7.1 percent of students tested proficient or advanced in algebra 9.3 percent in biology 13.6 percent in English which is down despite an appointed special person in charge from 18.1%, 10.9%, and 23%. No wonder Mrs. McClinton wants a structured, faith-based opportunity like Harrisburg Catholic School as she's raising her two boys. The four-year graduation rate is, I understand, 65%, the fourth lowest of any school district in the state. So why not give a chance on a scholarship to let the 6,500 students voluntarily, just as the secretary said with respect to the national uh, proposal, why not let parents have an opportunity to voluntarily take money provided both from local taxes and from state taxes? Here it would be um, on average uh, 8,200 per student, 4,100 and 4,100 based on a, a particular formula. And please, for those that will contend that we're hurting the Harrisburg School District, our proposal says we're gonna keep the average daily membership count the same despite the numbers of students that might avail themselves of those particular scholarships so that the state monies flowing to, to the school district do not reduce. I've seen the additional money we gave to Erie. I've seen the additional money we've given to Allentown and I don't think there's any measurable improvement in those school districts because we've never provided real accountability. The mayor of Harrisburg, from the other side, a Democrat, has supported our proposal because he understands saving families and saving kids and giving families opportunities with respect to their educational choice might bring more people back to the city of Harrisburg. And why, why? to use President Trump's phrase, why wouldn't we try? What do we have to lose? Let's give it, a, let's give it, a, let's give it an opportunity and see what the results are. 
I, I don't want to be like Joe Namath. That's going back some time, young, young man. <laughs> uh, but he's from my part of, the, of Pennsylvania where he guaranteed a win. Eh, but I'm pretty close to guaranteeing a win. And uh, that, that, that's the proposal that we have on, on the table. And for us to unveil this with Secretary DeVos, the leader in the nation on school choice, is really quite an honor. Secretary, if I might have our members uh, publicly introduce themselves, our whole team, and particularly the leader, have been uh, really champions on this front. And uh, Leader Cutler, if I might turn it over to you first, and then we'll, we'll go down the table. Thank you, sir. And, and please talk on the issue of school choice. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I actually want to talk to Christian and Joshua first. Make sure you hug your mom. Uh, she's a very brave woman, and she's making sure you have the best chance that you can. And that's important because that'll mean something as you go through life. Um, on, the, on the topic of school choice, uh, I know that not everybody has the same opportunity, I think, as Mrs. McClinton's story tells this morning. And I'd be interested in hearing as we do our discussion. I'm, I started out life as an x-ray tech, so I went to trade school first. And I was one of those rare individuals who was able to work my way through my undergrad degree and graduate debt free. And I think that we need to focus more on that and give that opportunity to young folks and make sure we point them in the right direction. And I'd love to hear your thoughts because you did mention the CTCs and the trades and I'd just like to hear a little bit more on that. So thank you for your service. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you again. Um, Kurt Sonny, I'm the um, Republican Chairman of the House Education Committee. And, um, you know, in Pennsylvania, school choice has, has been at the forefront for quite some time. Um, and as you're are very well aware, I'm sure that, that um, in, in different parts of the state, it means different things. Um, you know, the challenges are different between urban areas, suburban areas, and rural areas. Um, but one thing that should not be different is the ability for parents and students to have a choice. Um, and so um, we're going to continue to move down that road and, and try to keep expanding those choices and opportunities. Um, and we know, as you do, that there are many challenges um, that we're going to face as we do that. Um, but we have been pretty steadfast in Pennsylvania on, on keeping true to that that path, and, and um, I'm really looking forward to continuing that as chairman of the House Education Committee, and also really looking forward to, to seeing what um, help and assistance we can get out of Washington. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Mike Reese, I'm a state representative from Westmoreland County. And, and look, you know, school choice is a, is a lifeline for a lot of families, and it doesn't matter if you're in the city of Harrisburg or uh, if you're from Dr. Skinner School of Champion Christian School over in my district, um, it, it can impact many different families throughout our Commonwealth. Uh, Speaker Terzai has been leading on this issue in our Commonwealth. He pushes every year at the table for more dollars in the EITC. And uh, I'm certainly excited that, Madam Secretary, you're pushing a very similar program at the federal level that would, uh, frankly, almost double our investment here in Pennsylvania. So thanks for your work. Good morning, Madam Secretary, Bishop, Mr. Speaker. Uh, it really is an honor to be here. My name is uh, Matt Gobbler. I'm a representative from the 75th District. To uh, uh, borrow uh, Reverend Clater's words, I'm from the bush, um, <laughs> where, uh, where we have deer, and I'm going to add the elk that uh, sometimes outnumber the people. But um, one of the things I wanted to highlight is we've, we've highlighted uh, the diversity of the opportunities that are created by EITC, and that diversity is, is, is also geographic. Uh, we are sitting here, and the topic of today's discussion is the opportunity we're providing in an urban environment, but uh, I want to tell you personally the opportunities that have been created in my rural environment by EITC, OSTC, School Choice, uh, really have been transformational. And um, contrary to the arguments that the opponents may make, we are not diverting resources out of our uh, public education system. In fact, it is true that a rising tide floats all boats. Uh, um, I, I have uh, a number of uh, Catholic and Christian schools in my area that work very much in 
um, in collaboration with our public schools. And what we are providing is we're providing the opportunities for students to choose, students and families to choose the opportunities that work best for them. Um, and, and what we're seeing is we're seeing the entire education system flourishing as a result of that. Um, so as, as we continue to look at programs like the EITC and OSTC, and, and by the way, to point out that, uh, that those tax credits are actually a, a percentage, so the donations that come into our education system for scholarships uh, are less than a dollar for dollar uh, offset uh, in, in tax credits. So, th so it really is a generosity that brings more resources into the education system. Those are the sort of, of, of success stories that we need to champion, and, and those dollars are what make uh, success stories like we see across the table here. And thank you for, for sharing your family with us, Ms. McClinton, because uh, um, it's inspiring. And, 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 and your story uh, illustrates for us just how important it is that we continue to do this work. Mr. Speaker, Secretary DeVos, thank you for the, the work that you're doing uh, to bring the team together and, and continue to provide more opportunities. Uh, my name is Clint Owlett, and I have the opportunity to serve uh, Tioga, Bradford, and Potter County. Uh, North Central Pennsylvania, and uh, Joshua and, and Christian, I have a question. So how old are you guys? 12 years old. I'm 13. So I'm trying to think of what I was doing when I was 12 and 13. <laughs> I surely wasn't sitting at a hearing or <laughs> unveiling new education policy. So thank you for coming, and the, the future is bright, and uh, I'm looking forward to, to seeing uh, what you guys uh, end up doing. I think it's going to be amazing. So. Um, uh, thank you, Secretary, for, for joining us today, and uh, I have the opportunity to see what the EITC program has done in my community and um, how many students were, were able to serve through that, and it's, it's really a great model for what we would love to see happen at the federal level, and I really appreciate what you're doing with the Education Freedom Scholarship, and, and my big ask is to see Congress move this. I mean, we, we want to see this move out of committee and actually uh, come to fruition. I, I don't really want to see that wait. I think we need to, to push on that. We've proved that it's effective, that it works, and uh, businesses here in Pennsylvania want to engage in this process. They want to keep their, their tax dollars local, and for other folks to be able to do the same thing at the federal level um, is just a phenomenal idea, and I really would love to see that, that happen. Um, so, so anything we can do to help push that, just let us know. We, uh, we'll, we'll make phone calls. We'll write letters. We'll do whatever we need to do. But uh, we appreciate your leadership on this. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Secretary. I'm State Representative Kate Klunk, and I represent the southwestern corner of York County. And I just want to say thank you uh, for your leadership on this issue. My district benefits um, from school choice on the Catholic private school side, the charter school side, but also in what those institutions have done to change my public schools. Because of that choice and that competition, my public schools are better than ever. And through the EITC and OSD programs, my local students are benefiting just like the McClinton boys who are here today. Um, we see it on, on both sides with the scholarships, but also on the EITC EIO side through my, my local school districts and their education foundation. And I believe that our local, our local program, coupled with the Education Freedom Scholarship proposal that you're putting together at the federal level, could really be a game changer for communities like mine um, on both sides of the spectrum, public and private education. And I really look forward to getting that passed. I echo Representative Allett's um, comments and let us know what we can do because it could be a game changer for workforce development, apprenticeship programs, special education, transportation issues across the state of Pennsylvania. So um, please let us know how we can help make that change for our students because as the mother of a, a soon to be two year old, um, education is going to be and has been very important to me um, and I look forward to seeing where we can go and take that for our students here in Pennsylvania. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Uh, final words? Well, uh, again, thank you all for being here today and for um, your eloquent uh, advocacy for students and their families and uh, their educational futures. Um, I applaud Pennsylvania, your leadership in this issue and uh, applaud the latest iteration of that that's uh, 
I'm sure going to be the subject of more discussion in the coming days. Uh, and and uh, really hope that this uh, opportunity for Harrisburg area students comes to fruition. I think it's really, really, really important. And just to uh, follow up on a couple of the comments and questions uh, referring back to the Education Freedom Scholarship proposal, uh, just a re reiteration, it's proposed to be a voluntary fund that is voluntarily embraced by whatever states want to do it. So to come in alongside of and in addition to what you're doing here, I think really provides great opportunity to think very broadly and creatively on behalf of students. And uh, Minority Leader, Leader or Majority Leader Cutler talked about uh, career and technical education opportunities, and we know that uh, many of those programs today are more costly, uh, they're some of them duplicative, but there are ways to, with, I think with this, uh, this potential, to think very expansively and creatively about how to enhance those kinds of opportunities and how to enhance apprenticeship opportunities for students starting in, uh, in high school and how to enhance dual enrollment opportunities and how to enhance uh, one-off course choice opportunities and for rural students to perhaps have a micro school start up in their school to uh, allow them to learn differently. So again, really no limit to how creatively uh, you all could use EFS funds to enhance and improve and expand on these opportunities focused on students. And um, I think importantly to note again, it takes, much like your proposal um, at the state level, EFS would take nothing away from what any state is doing around education today or what the federal government, it, it is additive, it's in addition to. And uh, so what can, what can we all do? We can continue to urge our members of Congress to um, support students and to take this opportunity and make it a reality so that students like Christian and Joshua's peers can have opportunities to do um, everything that they are meant to be and do and uh, to thrive in their school and education environments. So I uh, thank you to the McClintons for being here today, for telling your story. Um, you are the embodiment of what all of us are working toward and on behalf of. So again, thank you for the opportunity to be here and for your support of kids and their futures. Thank you, Thank you Madam Secretary. Thank you. Please a round of applause.